Hi there folks, it's Hawken with Top Don again. Uh, today we're going to do a video on the Top Don Arta Diag Pro. This is a new tool for Top Don uh, that we recently released. I think the greatest thing about this tool is the price point. Uh, the value that it delivers is actually pretty crazy. Uh, you're going to get uh, bi-directional controls, all system scans, service functions, live data stream, pretty much everything you can need for a quick grab tool uh, in a shop or as a DIY. So uh, we'll go through some of the features today and kind of give you a general walkthrough on how the tool works and uh, you know the workflow of the menus and things of that nature. Here's uh, the box itself, so you can check it out here. So again, uh, that's the Arta Diag Pro. So we're going to go through the tool and take you for a tour, and uh, hopefully you find this video helpful. So when we get to the main screen, we've got a bunch of different choices here. So we've got Diagnose, we've got Services, we have OBD2, we have IM, which is uh, basically Emission Monitor Readiness, Battery Voltage, Upgrade, Data, and Settings. So we're going to go actually just a little bit in reverse order here. So we're going to go into the settings first. Settings is what you might expect. Uh, basically, you're going to have access to all of the normal things that you would have inside a settings menu. So we can change our units of measurement here up at the top. We can take screen captures if we toggle this on. You see we get a little camera icon in the top right there. And if we click that, at any point in time, it'll take a screenshot. Kind of a nice feature. Uh, automatic detection on connect, essentially, this will be when you power your tool up, it'll automatically connect to the vehicle and attempt to identify it. Uh, so if you don't want that feature turned on, toggle this radio button here. Otherwise, if you do want that turned on, then you can leave it turned on like this. Display and brightness, we can adjust the brightness of our screen, which of course can affect battery life. Now, that's less of a concern on the Arta Diag Pro because we actually have a corded connection. The Arta Diag Pro, while it does have an internal battery, actually uses a corded connection to the DLC or data link connector on the vehicle. Why is this nice? Because it actually charges the battery while it's plugged into the vehicle. So if you forget to plug it in on your bench and charge it up overnight, not a big deal. As long as the battery is not completely dead, you'll be able to plug it into the vehicle. And you'll see we have a little flashing light in the top left corner here indicating we are charging the battery right now. Now we've also got sound, so we can turn on or off uh, various sounds here. Network is how you set up your internet connection. And of course, we do need to set that up if we want to receive updates to the tool. Of course, that's very important, so make sure you do set up your network. Date and time allows us to change our time zones, as well as where we are located as, uh, as far as the time zone goes. Language, you can change the languages. Expiration date lets you know when your software will expire. So if you don't know when your software is set to expire, you can check in here. You'll want to connect, uh, excuse me, contact your local dealer if you do need to renew your software. Otherwise, you can also go to topdon.com and, of course, purchase any updates as necessary. Workshop information, we can change our workshop information. So you can put in the email address you want to use when you're sending reports. Uh, recovery is basically used for resetting the tool, and cleanup clears out the cache, uh, aka the diagnostic software. You don't need to use either of these unless you are experiencing a problem with your tool. Now we've also got about. This is going to give us all the information related to our tool's health. So we've got our serial number in the top right there, which they may ask you for if you have an issue with your tool and you contact support. Uh, we've got the MAC address there. Uh, our available storage, so how much space we have for downloading additional software, the resolution of our screen, the condition of our battery, the version of the software, which we can go in here to check if we have any system updates, uh, the disclaimer, which is just uh, normal stuff that you get from any manufacturer related to the tools that you buy, privacy policy and service agreement, same scenario there. Now one of the cool features you'll notice right out of the gate is you do actually have the voltage display right up in the top left here. This is nice because it tells you what the battery health is uh, on your vehicle, key on engine off, and that's very important to pay attention to when you're doing diagnostics as we don't want to run that vehicle battery down while we're working on the vehicle. Now one way you can obviously prevent that from happening is if you were to connect a top-down T30000, uh, the Tornado, 
or the T90000 and those will actually hold that voltage steady while you are working on the vehicle and prevent the battery from being depleted. We've also got Diagnose, so we're going to go into that first. Now when we go into Diagnose, we have Auto Detect, or we can manually select any brand of vehicle we want. You can filter them out based on what ones you've used previously, or by various region for uh, different vehicle manufacturers. You've also got History, so you can reconnect to any vehicle that you previously connected to by hitting the Quick Access. We're going to go into All. We're going to scroll all the way up and we're going to do Auto Detect. When we do Auto Detect, it's going to try to scan the VIN on the vehicle. Now keep in mind, Auto Scan or Auto VIN Detection is usually going to be supported only on modern vehicles. Now what do I mean when I say modern vehicles? Typically this refers to vehicles from the mid-2000s and onward. Uh, the vast majority of vehicles in the mid-2000s and older do not support the Auto VIN function. So you may have to manually ID the vehicle if you're working on an older vehicle. So we're going to go in and automatically detect the vehicle here. So you can see what we've got here for options. Now it's going to automatically scan all of the different modules in the vehicle. And as it goes through and scans all of these modules, it's going to check for fault codes in each of these systems. And of course, when it's all done checking all of these systems, we will get a vehicle health report. That is one of the strongest things about the Arta Diag Pro, especially if you are working in a shop and you're looking for a low cost tool for pre and post scanning vehicles, this is an excellent choice. Number one, because of the fact that it does automatically charge the battery while it's plugged into the vehicle. But number two, because it's a very, very compact, portable and simple to use tool. So again, if you're looking for a pre or post scan tool that's a low cost uh, unit for your shop, this is a really good asset. Uh, you can also use this tool for a variety of other things like basic service functions and things of that nature. So a great way that you can save your shop uh, some money and still be able to get a highly functional tool at a very reasonable price. So as we're talking through this here, we'll see that it's just about done with its scan. You can see the progress bar across the top here, the little green banner. And we're just about done. Gives us a little boop telling us that it has completed that. So now we've got vehicle health report that says all of the different modules that were scanned. We can tap on any module that had a fault to see additional detail. And then we can also share the report directly from this screen. So you'll see we've got uh, information about where we want to send it. We can retitle this. We can put in any messages or information we want. And then we can hit send. And this will automatically send an email to the address. Then we've got the report right there, so we can exit back out. Now we can say report if we want to hit it again to go back into it, and we're done with that. So we've done, that's your pre-scan, post-scan, quick scan function, right? Now, maybe we want to do something else. Maybe we want to go in and actually talk to a specific module. So then what we're going to do is we're going to go in and build the vehicle. So we're going to say, hey, we're going to work on a Volkswagen here. So this is a 2015 Volkswagen. Now we have access to a bunch of different options, right? So we can do our health report just like we did just a few minutes ago. Now it's going to go in and talk to the modules and whatnot. We're actually going to kill it and not let it finish this because we just did that. We're going to exit the health report. Then we have access to things like system selection. So if we want to talk to a specific module, and get live data out of it, uh, examine things like what bi-directional controls we might have access to, things of that nature. You see we have all the normal options that we would have on any of the professional series tools, which is excellent. So we can do manual coding, we can do manual adaptations, uh, we can do actuation tests, which is bi-directional control. So we can do the sequential output tests that you would get from Volkswagen in most cases. Uh, we can clear fault codes, we can read freeze, frame or read freeze frame data specifically for any faults that have been triggered. Uh, got access to, excuse me, basic settings, which again, this is all the manual style basic settings and adaptations. So you do need to consult something like the Ross Tech Wiki in order to know what those basic setting options are. If we go in there and we look, you'll have some of them that are listed like this. 
So these are functions that you will frequently conduct after doing a service on the vehicle of some nature or replacing a part. So you do have a lot of them that are predefined, but if you need additional information on them, then you would just want to go to such uh, sites like the Rostec Wiki in order to get additional information on that. Uh, data stream, we have the option to look at things like by channel or by list. And of course, this is highly useful if we want to sample some live data. So a good example here, we could check out a couple of different things together. And you see we can look at our information and combine it into a little, a little graph here. So we have the access to graph PIDs as well. So again, this is highly useful with uh, respect to diagnosing vehicle issues. Really nice to be able to graph a couple of data PIDs like this. So again, really useful for quick functions and quick diagnosis on vehicles. With such a low cost of entry, you know, if you're trying to add an additional tool to your arsenal at a shop, or again, if you're a DIY, this is a great tool to be able to have access to a lot of powerful functions at a very low cost. So again, we can see all the different modules that we hypothetically would have access to. Uh, we do have some online function stuff available. Online coding is also supported. So if you do replace a module and you do need to do some online coding, you have access to that. Uh, and of course, we can also do system scan. And we do have also some special function related, uh, excuse me, special function related choices, which we do have available for a lot of different vehicles. Now remember, which special functions and which bi-directional controls that are available for a given vehicle is a function of which software the manufacturer gives. So if the manufacturer makes a bi-directional control available, then we will usually have it on our tool. If the manufacturer does not allow for bi-directional control, or there is not a special function that is available, then you will not find it in these menus. So again, just keep that in mind when you are curious about whether or not a given function will be available. Remember, special functions is one place you can find some of your basic service procedures. So we'll go back. That was just some of the options we had with respect to the Volkswagen we are plugged into. Now, you're curious, what is services? If we go into services, this is where we're going to find a lot of common service functions. So maybe we did something like uh, replace some injectors and we need to code them or program them to the control unit. Uh, maybe we've got some immobilizer synchronization that needs to be done, something of that nature, or some transmission reset of some sort. Uh, these are where we're going to find those types of procedures or functions on the tool. Again, services is the menu you're going to look there. OBD2 gives us access to look at the vehicle through OBD2 protocols specifically. Now this is helpful because OBD2 is oftentimes a much faster function uh, as far as scanning data. So if you're just trying to do diagnosis and get live data, a lot of the time the OBD2 mod, uh, mode is faster if you are trying to just graph data information. So we can look at a few different PIDs here together. And of course we can do combine and we can do this here to graph them all together. So again, really helpful if we're trying to do a diagnosis. We can graph all of these together. Now we do also have access, if we go back one more here, we can record them. And recording them will actually save this data in a file that we can review at a later time. So you can see here it's just asking us what to name it. And we can save that. So again, you can use that for later review if you wish, which can be very helpful in your diagnostic process. Uh, of course, we have access to all of the other normal OBD2 modes you would see on any scan tool. And of course, this is helpful with respect to diagnosis, things like mode 6, where we can go in and look at uh, monitoring status and things of that nature, find out if we have misfires on a specific cylinder, things like that. So again, very helpful to have access to all of that information in the OBD2 mode. Again, OBD2 mode is very useful for diagnostics because you will get faster data refresh on any scan tool you work with uh, if you use OBD2 mode. The other benefit of OBD2 mode is you do get a standardized format of data, whereas if you go into the uh, OEM specific data, you will see it in a OEM format, which could change the units of measurement and the way the data is displayed. 
So if you're not familiar with the vehicle you're working on, as far as how the manufacturer displays their data, you might want to choose OBD2 instead. So we go into IM here, and you're kind of curious, hmm, what's this? So this is basically our emission readiness status. So all of the monitoring functions that take place with respect to emission readiness, you can see here we get green or red dots. So the misfire monitor is completed, the fuel system monitor is completed, comprehensive component monitoring has completed. Now the little X you can see here says it's not supported, and the red means it's not complete. So heated cattle, or excuse me, evaporative emission system has not completed. You might ask yourself why that's happening. Uh, that is actually on this vehicle due to the fact that the fuel level is below a certain level. Uh, typically, most manufacturers want your fuel level to be somewhere between a half to three quarters of a tank, but again, it can vary from vehicle to vehicle. However, again, this is a helpful piece of information. Uh, if you need to do readiness monitor completion in the state that you work in, OBD2 mo mode like this is very useful. And you see it also does tell us the voltage of the module while it's doing this uh, scanning, which is pretty cool. And then we can also do upgrading. So if we have any software updates here, pretty straightforward to do that. You do need to be connected to the internet in order to do any software updates. So keep that in mind. Make sure that you do in fact have your internet connection uh, connected. Data is your folder where you can find any information that you have stored. So diagnostic record, uh, diagnostic reports. So we can see there's a report there we can look at. We can reopen the reports. Uh, diagnostic record. You can see we also have cloud reports and local reports. So you can see cloud reports are ones that have been uploaded. Those are typically going to be the ones you have emailed. And diagnostic record. Just share some additional data that we have stored. Uh, DTC library is a place you can go in to just type in various codes and look for a generic definition. DLC. This is just a general picture showing you where the DLC or data link connector is frequently located on vehicles. Feedback is what you want to use if you have any issues with your tool. So if some data is missing, uh, you can't talk to a specific module, things of that nature, you would want to go into the feedback section here. It's going to save the last 20 vehicles you worked on. You're going to select which vehicle that you have, uh, any vehicle that you had an issue with. Then you can attach your log file. And I usually just attach all the log files. And after you attach those log files, you put in a piece of information here, basically saying what the problem was with the software. And then you send this out, and the engineers will have an opportunity to fix that for you. So the next time you go to use the tool, they should be able to get that repaired, and the function will be restored or improved in some fashion. So again, keep feedback in mind. That is how we make the tool better. Images is basically where we can store any screenshots that we have taken with the tool. Now, you remember we found screenshot functioning uh, in the settings menu, so that's how you would turn that on and off, and then we would have access to that there. Firmware fix is if you have any issues related to connecting to the vehicle, we would want to click on that and perform the firmware fix if we're having connection issues uh, with the vehicle itself. FAQ is just a basic uh, kind of tutorial about some common problems. And that is a basic summary of all of the information we've gone through. Now there's one other option. We do have battery voltage, which is just essentially a mirror image of what you see up here, right? So we have 13.3 up here, and this is going to graph the battery voltage. So just a helpful little tool that you can use to watch your battery voltage status. So that completes the basic walkthrough of our Arta Diag Pro. Again, cannot stress what a value this tool is. Again, a hugely ad advantageous tool if you are just going to do uh, quick pre and post scans, uh, service functions, things of that nature, or you want to just have a fast grab diagnosis tool where you can graph live data, uh, pull codes from all systems and things of that nature, or check OBD2 readiness status, or you want to look at live data in OBD2 mode. Again, can't stress just how nice it is to have a very quick, easy grab tool like this that also charges itself while plugged into the data link connector. Uh, there is no wireless functionality built into this tool. It's all hardwired. So, uh, you know, if you're looking for a wireless tool, this isn't the tool you want. But if you like corded tools, this is definitely the tool you want to look at, uh, especially for the price point uh, MSRP of about $500, I believe. So uh, check it out. I think you'll really like it. 
If you do have questions about the tool or you're having any concerns or issues with your tool, if you're in the USA, please go to topdon.us and reach out to our hotline. Otherwise, if you're having an issue outside of the US or North America, please go to topdon.com and contact the support portal on the support tab there for assistance. Uh, we do also have some support Facebook groups, so you can always post in there if you're having issues. Uh, typically, the support folks will get back to you in there as well. So again, I'm Hawken, and I greatly appreciate you taking the time to watch our walkthrough video on the Top Don Arta Diag Pro.